I decided I'm going to be a stunt woman. I started getting some jobs in acting. I had my entire face, neck, arm. It was all burned in second and third degree burns. We've seen people set free of smoking, alcohol, anorexia, and bulimia. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory to God. God Almighty created you, and He created you to have fellowship with Him. But let me tell you something. We're a church of disciples. Discipleship is a key to our existence. It was just another day for an experienced Hollywood stunt woman. But during a dangerous car stunt, something went horribly wrong. That's all Desiree remembers about that day, when an incredible onset explosion left her fighting for her life. But after only 10 days, she walked out of a Los Angeles burn unit completely healed. And that remarkable miracle has now been captured in her new book, Beyond the Flame, a journey from burning devastation to healing restoration. Today, Desiree, along with her husband, Mel, pastor the growing In His Presence Church in the heart of Hollywood's entertainment industry. And this highly acclaimed book tells the story of that amazing journey. Order your copy of Beyond the Flame today and begin your own journey out of the challenges you face. What are you trusting God for? Physical healing? A financial miracle? Purpose for living? Nothing's too big for God. What He did for Desiree, He'll do for you. Beyond the Flame will encourage you to stand on the promises of God's Word, speak life into your situation, and reach for your miracle. You too can live beyond the flames in your life, and you can start today. Well, I hope you have some pillars in your life that you're building upon because God said, I won't allow more in your life than you can handle. He not only means that he's not going to allow the evil that's against you to come against you without him standing up for you and giving you grace for every situation, giving you victory for every situation, but he also means that he's not going to pour out his blessings on someone who's going to lose it and scatter it and not be responsible with it. So what we're talking about for these last four, five, six weeks is the pillars of In His Presence Church, what we build upon. You need to have pillars in your own life. One of the pillars that we talked about was we are what? We're a Jesus church. Everything is centered around Jesus Christ. He's the priority of our church. He's the difference maker. He's, a, he's the one that we talk about and we follow and that we tell everyone about because he's the king. Not just a king, he's the king of every king. And he's the Lord of every Lord. He's the savior of the world, amen? He, Jesus church, we're a love church. We've got the love of God here. We've been loved by him and we love now because he loves us. We're also a Word of Faith church. We, we love the Word of God. We have faith that the Word of God says that Christ rose from the dead. Our faith is in that. We bet our eternity on that. Amen? We believe it in our heart. We say it with our mouth. We're also a holiness church. Listen, he told, he told Abraham, don't come near this burning bush. I got so much for you. But until you take your sandal off and respect the holiness of God, you can't have anything I have for you. We know that we serve a holy God, right? Amen. So we're a holiness church. We're also a church of great diversity. How many came to Kingdom and Color and saw the diversity that we have here at In His Presence Church? Over 40 nations represented. Why? Because the Lord brings all people. They're all equal in His sight. Amen. Amen. He loves everybody. And then we're also a church of what? Power. But let me tell you something. We're a church of disciples. Discipleship is a key to our existence. Now, most people skim over that and just think, yeah, I'm a disciple. You think you're a disciple because you go to church. You think you're a disciple because you're a Christian. There's many Christians that aren't disciples. There's many people that go to church that aren't disciples. And discipleship is key with the Lord. I'm going to show you that today. Your life is going to be changed today because what I'm about to share with you, most likely, you might not have ever heard. So I'm going to share some things in the Scripture with you. I want you to be open. I want you to be open. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. I saved this for last because how the importance of it. Ephesians 6. Look at verse 1. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents. We like that already. 
Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You know, if you read the Ten Commandments, this is the first one that comes up that has a promise to it. The others are just commandments. This is the one that he gives a promise. I think we kind of need it when we tell our children. <laughs> Obey your parents and you're going to get something from it. They like that, praise God. They need a little incentive, right? He said, Obey your parents. This is the honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Don't provoke them to wrath. Don't beat your kids. Don't be horrible to your children. Don't provoke them. He says when you provoke them to wrath, it means that the kind of wrath that you show your kids, they are going to carry on throughout their generation. They will pass it down to their children. Don't provoke them to do that. Don't provoke them to live like that. For some of it's too late, but you could apologize to your kids. Come on, we're not supposed to act out on them because we get all out of pocket because they do something wrong. We need to discipline them. We need to show them direction. We have a rod and a staff. The staff is to hook them back in the right direction. The rod's to tap on them to keep them going in the right direction. But we're not supposed to provoke them to wrath because the way you are is the way they'll be. Not what you say. But they're going to copy you. They can't help it. Their soul is going to be filled with your patterns. Their soul, their mind, their will and emotions. They will respond like you respond. How many of us hate saying this? Oh my gosh, that's just like my dad. We can't help it. So they're going to be like you. Train them up in the admonition of the Lord. Look what it says. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. In the training and admonition of the Lord. In the training and admonition of the Lord. You should be making disciples out of your children. You don't make the adults out of them. You make disciples out of them. Just letting them live there and them growing up to be an adult, you haven't done your job. They are on loan to you, and then when they leave your home, they should be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, come on, it's amen or oh me. Yeah, yeah you should train them up in the way they should go. Train your kids to follow Jesus. This is what Jesus does. This is how we live. This is the direction we go in. This is how we respond to things. Godly ways. You make disciples out of your children because they're going to leave you one day. And then they will pass down to others how you train them. They will make disciples. If you make disciples, they will make disciples. Amen. We're a discipleship church. Why? It's key with the Lord. It's one of the key things that you could do with your whole life with God. Go to uh, Romans chapter 10. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Somebody has to go tell them. Nobody wakes up one day unless they have, the, the Lord is stirring them. Nobody, I think I'm going to go be a Christian. They must have an example. Somebody has to go to them and live an example before them and tell them about Christ. You and I are called to make disciples. We're not called just to be a Christian. We're called to make disciples. Let me show you. Okay, look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second, how are they going to know if you don't go and tell them? The people at your work, how will they know if you don't live it in front of them? Second Timothy 2, verse 1, You therefore, my son, my daughter, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You need this grace. Be strong in it. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, come on, I was open with you in front of everybody Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. So everything you heard from me, how I lived 
in Christ in front of you. He said, commit these to faithful men. Not only commit these to faithful men, but commit these to faithful men who will tell others. This should go down in generations, what you're living, what you're learning. You should be teaching others, making disciples, and those disciples are not your disciples unless they can make disciples of other people. You're not finished unless the people you're affecting can make disciples of others. Oh, y'all don't get me. Go to, go to um, Matthew 18. 19. Let me see. Turn in your Bibles. Matthew 19. No, no, no. Not 19. Uh, hold on. I'll be right with you. Matthew 28. Verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make what? Say it out loud. A disciple is a disciplined follower of a mentor that you have fully invested in, that you're open to, you're being taught and mentored by. You're a disciplined follower. You've structured your life around being the protege of somebody who's mentoring you. You're learning and you're seeing and you're copying and imitating. So you're a disciplined learner. That's what a disciple is. He said, go into all the world and make what? Of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And listen, when you do that, I will go with you to the ends of the age. This is a promise of Jesus that as you are making disciples, not that you are saved, you're going to go to heaven, but he said while you're living here, I'm going to go with the ones who are making disciples of all the nations. That means your family, your children, the people at your job, that you are a disciple. A disciple is not a disciple till they make disciples. Because if you're a dis disciplined follower of Jesus, you make disciples. Okay, all right. I know this is, a, this is tough to swallow. Let's look at... Uh, Well, let me just say this. After the amazing example of Jesus' life to you, come on, let's think about it. His miracles, he raised the dead, opened blind eyes, dominating demons. He'd go all the way across the lake just to cast the demon out of that one guy. All those demons and that one guy. He set them free. He would take hours. It took hours for them to go across that lake. He would travel all that time, all that way, just to cast the demon out of that one guy. Not to mention that on top of that, his mind-blowing display of love on the cross. Come on, let's think about this Jesus. Is there any doubt that he could and would do anything for you? Anybody doubting that? How many believe he'd just do, if he would do all of that, he would, come on. How many, how many have faith in the Lord today? I mean, everything that you could think of would be possible for this man. I mean, isn't all things possible with him? If there was one thing that he would leave with you and tell you, wouldn't it be the very best thing for your life? Go to Phoenix. Uh, move to Alaska. Uh, go parachuting. Whatever it is. I mean, maybe you wouldn't want to do it, but if this man told you. Now, I could tell you something, but if this man told you, wouldn't you believe it must be? the very best thing for my life. After all he did for me, died on the cross, nailed to a cross, took my sins upon himself. He took the wrath of the Father on himself. He was so full of sin, his Father had to turn away from him for the very first time. Do you understand? He took all our sins upon himself. He took our place and gave us his place. Who loves you like that? Who could possibly love us with such depth and intensity like Jesus Christ? Is there anybody like him? So wouldn't the last thing he would leave with you and tell you be worth hearing? Wouldn't it be the very best thing? Could you think that you missed it? 
that's really not what I want. Or would you think, if he told me that, I'm going to grab a hold of it. It's got to be the best thing for my life. Right? Come on, anybody give a shout. Say, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Here it is. Go into all the world, all the nations, and make disciples. Something's got to be cool about that. If he is telling me that, that's his direction for me. This guy that died for me, loved me so much. If he's given me that kind of instruction, I can't look at it and say, you missed it. Not really for me. I know. I, I'm too busy. I got, no, no. I've got to look at it and say, if this man told me that and I don't do it, I must not be thinking the best of myself. Because if this guy says it, I should do it. He already showed me. He loves me. Nobody loves me like him. Come on, he would go to the cross for me. If he's giving me that instruction, I better do that because if I really care about my future and my life, I'd be missing out on it if I don't follow his direction. So here's what he told you. Go into all the nations and make disciples. Baptizing them. Win them to Christ. Get them filled with the Spirit. Water baptized. Get, convert them to Christ. Teach them what I taught you. And when you do that, I'll go with you. Amen. It's got to be the best commandment that we could have. It's the last thing he tells you to do after showing you how much he loves you. He said, now, if you want to continue in this kind of amazing love that I have for you, go make disciples. It's the key to the church, making disciples. Why? You enter into a realm where he's with you. He didn't tell you, go preach a good sermon. He didn't go to tell you, wow them. He said, go and make disciples. Go impact them with all I've given you. You know, we've been preaching good for 30 years. I mean, look at the preachers we got. T.D. Jakes. Joel's got 47,000 people going to his church every weekend. All these amazing preachers. That's awesome. 7% of the church has ever led one person to Christ. Preaching doesn't get it done. Preaching good doesn't get it done. It's the people making disciples that's key. Are you here? Yeah, we've been preaching good. He's going to go to the cross. He doesn't need anybody to do that. He doesn't need 12 guys that he picks out of, you know, out of the air. Come on, a bunch of smelly fishermen and farmers, and you got Judas who betrays him. Lousy heart, de kiss of death, Judas. He doesn't need them to do what he's doing. He's going to go to the cross. He's going to die for our sins. He doesn't need another man to do that. But yet, while he's here, he takes the time and effort to teach and mentor 12 people who are lower than normal, that nobody would value. Not one person would value them. And by the way, I have a little dilemma. Let me ask you, see if you're with me. Would you give these guys some authority? <laughs> you gonna give them some power? You gonna give Judas power? You know he's gonna betray you. Why are you giving him authority and power? You're gonna give Peter some authority and power? I don't know him. I never met him. Don't know the man. But you gave him power and authority. Would you have given those men power and authority? Here's what the Lord told me. He goes, Mel, but they're not going on their own. I'm going with them. I'm going with them. I'm going with them. Hey, that's you too. It doesn't matter where you come from. If you're a disciple maker, he goes with you. Your life is elevated. What you put your hands to is blessed. 
He's with you the whole time. Oh, I love it. I got plenty that if people knew it, they'd never give me any authority. But you don't go on your own. He goes with you. I love it. Go into all the world and make disciples. Do you agree he has your best interest in mind? Now that you know what he thinks about discipleship, do you trust that you have your best interest in mind? After you know this, will you continue just to go and live your life and let people walk by you? Or will you structure your life to make disciples? People don't get saved and become a disciple by accident. Just like you can't parent your children and grow them up just because they live in the house, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean people get discipled. You have to intensify your life and intentionally structure your life and have the transformation that says from now on, I'm not just a Christian, I'm a disciple. And disciples make other disciples. They turn their phones off when pastors preaching. They amen the pastor. They do all kinds of amazing things. <laughs> you know, the Lord's going to give his life and suffer for mankind. Can you understand that he does not want this to be in vain? Given the magnitude of the cost of this kind of sacrifice, can you see that he would not want it lost or forgotten? So what does he do? He gets 12 guys, and he gives them authority and power, and he says, go. It's not your ability. It's my ability in you. I'm going to transform you into the greatest leaders of all time. In fact, a lot of you are going to have some books in the Bible that you wrote. Can you imagine Peter thinking he would ever have a book in the Bible? He got two of them. Why? the Lord's with him. How about you? How about you? Don't you want to be elevated? Aren't you just thinking, I need to soar in life? I can't just keep working and paying bills. I'm a Christian. I'm in Christ. Something should be happening. It should be big time. Oh, come on. I should be soaring in life. Come on. Everything I put my hands to should be blessed. When you become a disciple that makes disciples, he goes with you. Now, if you want to go your own way, he'll let you do that too. He'll help you. He'll love you, no matter which direction you go in. But you're not going to enter into that, oh, wow, this is awesome type level, unless you make disciples. Amen. He could have put up billboards, taken ads out in the Nazareth Herald. He could have chosen to advance his ministry any way he wanted he knew he was going to die and be raised and ascend into heaven. What he was starting was at stake here. The thing he came for was at stake. It could be lost. But he chose disciples because disciples is the most powerful and effective way. We got all kinds of other ways to do this. But there's nothing more powerful than disciples making disciples one-on-one -on -one with people. How would you find out about the church? How would you come to the Lord? Somebody told you. How about you? I live right here. You live right here, so you saw the church? Okay. You moved in the area. Somebody told you about the church? How about you? Somebody told you? Your wife told you. She brought you. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen you before. Good. I'm glad you got him in church. No, I'm just kidding. How about you, Lacia? Your cousin told you? Your parents dragged you here? Your parents? How would you hear? Your wife worked in the area and brought you? The Lord guided you. Yeah, the Lord guided you. I prayed with you at uh, Mel's Diner that day. Listen, Reed was in the, he was the manager of Mel's Diner that just after the earthquake, he was shaking like a leaf. He was so scared. Me and Desiree walked in. We led him to Christ right there. We prayed with him right there. Glory to God. Amen. We prayed right in the place with him. Hey, come on. Woo, glory. How about you? Came and knocked on the door. Came and knocked on the door here. How about you? How would you hear about it? In-laws. 
friend, friend, come on. People said something to them. Somebody made a connection and contacted them. It is the way, it is the only way the world will ever be transformed. It's disciples making disciples. Jesus knew it. That's why he spent so much time with 12 normal or less than normal people. 12 guys nobody ever wanted, nobody would ever think could do anything. Why? Because when you enter into discipleship, he goes with you. He makes it amazing. All of a sudden, life changes. You begin to soar. You can do things and walk in a way you could never do on your own. I don't care how much money you had or how many friends you had. He enters in this with you and makes your life something that's unstoppable and unforgettable. Amen. We're talking about making disciples. We're talking about us in the process. Until you make disciples, you've not forsaken all. You've not finished the process. We wake one. That means we live before them and they wake up to the truth that there's something different in you. They're just living their life. They're seduced. They're dumbfounded by life all around them. Pains and heartaches and good thing here. I'll take one step forward, three steps back. But then when they may meet you, they awaken that there's life in you that they don't have. We wake them by living in front of them, by praying for them, by loving on them. We wake them by the way we talk and the way we carry ourselves. We're not schlocky at work. We come early. We leave late. We're the best worker there. Our character, our integrity is intact. We show them an example of Jesus Christ, filled with power and life. Amen. We wake them. Then we win them. We pray with them. I want to take you to lunch. I want to share my faith with you. I want to tell you about the greatness of my God, my Jesus. And we win them to Christ. We close the deal. We pray with them. Then we walk them. We walk them into a community, community that will wrap their arms around them, that will love on them. Something has to take the place of the world. It's the local church. It's the body of Christ in a local church that will love on them and be there for them and set the example for them. This is discipleship. After we walk them, we walk them down the aisle. We stand with them as they make a profession in front of everyone. Then we wash them. We get them water baptized. We get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. That there's strength and power in their life. That they know they've been washed in the blood of Jesus. That they died with Christ, but they rose with Him to new life. We wash them. And then once they're washed, we watch them. We make sure they get plugged in. We make sure they get connected with other Christians. We make sure that they can stand on their own and make disciples. Because until they can make disciples, our job is not finished. Amen. That's discipleship. And Jesus said he'll go with you if you'll take that on. If we die to self and become disciples of Jesus Christ, it means... That we wake them, we win them, we walk them, we wash them, and we watch them. And we make disciples that they will take what we've given them and pass it on down to other generations. Can you see that Jesus doesn't want what he's doing to get lost? He wants it to continue throughout the generations. That won't happen with great preaching. That won't happen with great celebrities. That won't happen with with anything else but discipleship. That's how it works. If it would have worked any other way, he would have done it. Nobody ever said, wow, you're a great preacher. They said, man, you got authority. The way you walk in power. And his disciples walked in the same authority and the same power. That's the only way it happens. But he's depending on you and I to go into all the nations and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe what He taught us. And He said, I'll go with you to the ends of the age. Come on, can we give Jesus a thank you praise? Come on, let's get... Listen. 
Orange seeds make orange trees. Cows make cows. Disciples make disciples. No one else make disciples. I won't make, I listen, my preaching won't make disciples. It might help in the disciple making process, but it's you personally that reach into the life of someone and go through the process with them and let them know that Christ loves you and that he has a, he has a plan for your life and you walk them through it and you don't let them go. You know, listen, some of us are, 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 are delivering babies out on the sidewalk and then the elements just kill the baby. No, we have to carry through and make sure they can stand on their own and make disciples. Amen. Amen. But that gets in the way of my plans. <laughs> that gets in the way of my plans. You don't know my destiny, what God has for me. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And there is no next thing that takes the place of the main thing. You're, you're fooling yourself if you've gone on to the next thing and you don't still have the main thing. Because the next thing is empowered because you're in the main thing. Oh, I know that's confusing for some people. but That next thing is favored and anointed and lifted up because you're in the main thing. You can see the next thing because you're flowing in the main thing. Once you leave the main thing and go on to the next thing, you're in your own strength now. You're not empowered by God. Jesus ain't with you. He's with the disciple makers. Let me go over here because I... Uh, I'm shameless. I'll take it. You probably didn't hear me, but I'll just take the applause anyway. The key is discipleship. That I am changed by the life of God that somebody has shared with me. I know Christ because somebody has shared the gospel with me. Somebody came and got me when I was filthy mouthed, running around, all crazy all over town. Somebody lived as a witness in front of me, wrapped their arms around me. They were not thronged by the words I was saying. They were not thronged by the, my ideas. They were stayed with me because they knew that if they lived Christ in front of me that I would change. And they stood with me. And here I am. Here I am because of that. It's powerful. They started taking me to church. They started explaining the gospel with me. And then all of a sudden, I just wanted to go on my own. I just wanted to be everywhere. I wanted to find the Lord in everything I did. And then pretty soon, I started winning people to Christ. I became a soul winner. And a foolish, filthy mouth, crazy male entered in to a realm of discipleship and Jesus elevated me that I could be a part and have the privilege and stewardship over this church. Th listen, I don't own this church. I'm a steward of this church. It's His church, but I'm privileged to be here. I could have never gotten here on my own. I'm only here because I became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you here? Are you here? Amen. Amen. And that's what he wants to do in your life. He needs disciples to carry the message on that the generations could know what God has done in your life. You have to carry it on, teaching people, admonishing them to walk with the Lord. You can't end the process just once you're saved. Now you have to be a disciple and a disciplined follower makes disciples. Tell the person next to you, get busy. Come on. Let me, let me ask you this. I'm almost done here. Are you living in a way that must be carried on? Some people aren't. And so they don't make disciples. Why? What I have, I don't really want to give to anybody else. 
I don't want to share it with them. I, they got some, Listen, your God is so magnanimous and so amazing and huge. He, oh, he can't even be comprehended fully by anyone. He is so over the top loving and good. You have an amazing God, so go out and be amazing. The more you know him, the more you follow him and obey him, you enter into that magnanimous part of God. You get to know him in a greater way. You will live a life that you want to pass on to others. He lifts you up in a realm that you say, this is where the gold is. This is where the riches are. This is what I've been looking for. I thought it was some of the shiny things of the world, but it's not. This is it right here. I'm walking with Almighty God. I was, whoo, I was impressed by that house. I was impressed by all those things. But that doesn't even compare to where God has me right now. Whoo, I just want another chance to tell somebody how wonderful and awesome my God is. How great my Jesus is. I want to tell you about it. Now you've got a life that you want to pass on. You enter into a closeness with the Lord when you draw the line in the sand and say, I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. From here on out, I'm a disciple. When you do that, you enter into a realm with the Lord that you know Him in a way. It's over for the devil. It's over for the world. Oh, come on. It can't even compare. Listen, I'm happy. I got the joy of the Lord. Man, I wake up every day happy. I challenge. I'm crazy challenged. He's got all his demons after me. But I got the victory. Glory to God. I go to sleep with peace at night. When troubles enter my mind, I can get rid of them immediately. Are you hearing? God wants you on a level that you're totally victorious in this life. As you make a decision to be a disciple, that's what happens. You enter into a realm that not everybody can enter in. But God's called you to it. Are you living in a way that must be carried out? Are your priorities straight? Where's your allegiance? Who's your God? Last thing he said must be the best thing for us if he said it. It can't be like the third best. Right? He didn't just pick something out and go, well, this will be good for you. No, this is his very best. Go and make disciples of all the nations. Go and make disciples because I'm going to go with you. All your little flaws, I couldn't care less about them. They don't, they, I, they don't make me nervous. The things you think don't make me nervous. All those little desires in your soul, I'm going to change those. I'm going to give you something better. Man, I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. I'm going to give you joy in the morning. I'm going to change. Listen, I'm not nervous about you at all. I'm just asking, will you walk with me and go and make disciples of all the nations? And if you do, I'll take care of it all for you. Come on, if he did it for Judas, he knows he's going to betray him. How bad are you? How bad could you be? Could you be a Judas? If you're not that bad, don't worry about it. Gave him authority and power. Why? Because this was important to him. The message will be lost without disciples. So he said, I'll go with you and I'll make the difference. I'll, I'll cover everything for you and make the difference. So you can go out with boldness and courage today and you can become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and know that he'll go with you and don't worry about a thing. Your whole life's about ready to change. I'm telling you something's going to come alive in you. The whole life that you live is going to be filled with power and strength. God's going to use you and he's going to walk with you every day. Come on, give Jesus a great big praise. I'm telling you. It's going to happen. Des and I, we invite people over for dinner. We like to do that. We like to have, you know... We'll invite couples over, or maybe one couple or three or four or whatever it is, have parties at the house. We just enjoy that kind of thing. Now, when we do, I'm out of the house that morning early because she's going to put me to work. My, look, my wife, it has to be immaculate. She's got to have all this stuff done. Man, the list starts. So 9 o'clock in the morning, 
See you later. I got to go. I hear, hey, come here. I didn't hear that. And I just go. And she'll have four or five people there that day cleaning up the house. How many, how many women feel like that? If you're going to have people over, it's got to look amazing. Sure. Yeah, that's just a woman thing. It's not a man thing. <laughs> come on. So I'm out. But when people come over, we're on our best behavior. You know. We're, we, we welcome them in. Hey, how you doing? Come on in. Awesome. Oh, it looks like this all the time. You know, it's, it's nothing, really. And we've cooked a great meal, and we're expecting them to have a great time. And we, we, show, we want to make sure our best is up front. No, here's, here's the rules. No food fights. No feet up on the table. No burping in dinner. At dinner. Can't do that. Dogs aren't in the house. Don't feed the animals from the table. We have all these kind of rules that when people come over, we want to put on our... Now, that's not us normally. Normally, I got my feet up on the table. The dog's there. I'm throwing food to them, you know. Burping. Desiree's one to ten. Oh, that was a five. That was a four. Come on. We're just normal people. But when people come over, it's different. You can't just tell people to go read their Bibles. You got to walk them to the table. We don't go just sit down and eat and expect them to, at some point in time, come sit with us and eat with us. We go get them and we walk them to the table. There's a table here. You can't just expect people just to go read their Bibles and find out for themselves. You have to go get them. You have to love on, your love has to be immaculate, has to be awesome. Why? Because I have intentional discipleship. They're not coming to the Lord by accident. He's using me and leading them into the kingdom. Are you here? So I walk them to the table that God has prepared for them in the presence of all their enemies. And He touches their lives and changes them. But it's intentional. It's not by accident. I go to work differently now. I live my life differently now. I go to the market, I'm on the lookout. I'm not there just for what I need. I'm there for Him. I'm thinking about discipleship all the time. Why? I want to walk with Him. He cares about everybody I walk by. Sometimes the world's need is so great, we feel overwhelmed. What can we do that will impact the world for the cause of Christ? Pastors Mel and Desiree Ayers and the team at In His Presence have created a global ministry outreach. Through accountability and tracking real-time ministry results, we've developed opportunities that will allow your giving to make a real difference. From planting new churches and supporting ministry leaders to preaching the gospel to the Muslim world and fighting sex trafficking, you'll know that every dollar you give to this program is changing lives for the better. Pick up the phone right now or visit us on the web and send a gift of any size today. That simple action will begin a process that will reach around the globe. In today's world of competing voices, this is a place where your financial giving is reaping an incredible harvest. The clock is ticking, so call, write, or go online today. If you've ever experienced an eating disorder or know someone who has, then you understand the shame, the humiliation, and the fear. Millions of men and women today are literally held in bondage to this crippling problem with no answer in sight. But now, one woman has broken through the lies of the diet industry and dared to tell the truth. Desiree Ayers was a successful Hollywood actress and professional stunt woman. She was at the top of her field and yet hid the secret of anorexia and bulimia for years. In her remarkable book, God Hunger, Desiree Ayers exposes the lies and dares to speak the truth. Order online at GodHunger.com. If you or a loved one suffers from an eating disorder, then don't wait. God Hunger. Finally, hope is here.